In this video, we'll be covering the process of filling out your inventory import sheet. As a new user, you will either receive a link to download the import template from a support team member, or you can download it yourself on the Flex Help Center. Once you have opened the template, you will see it has been pre-filled with the example inventory that is also present in your instance of Flex. First, we'll cover the Models tab in the Basic template. We'll cover the Units tab and the Advanced template later on. First is the name or descriptive item name. This is the longhand name for an item or package that appears on quotes and pull sheets and the only required field in Flex. However, it's ideal to be as descriptive as possible. Next is size. You'll see we're not using the size field for this AMP, but we do use it for the IEC cable above it on the template. Size allows you to distinguish between similar but different items like cables of different sizes, rack units, truss, and more. Short name allows for a shortened item name to be shown in the inventory browser. Next is structure and availability. These settings distinguish between different types of inventory. If you look over to the right, you will see the inventory groups of the example items match the presets which you can apply within Flex as a reference. When entering your inventory, you can refer to these items and their context as inventory, cases, racks, and containers, and apply those same settings to your inventory on this tab. If you're not sure how to enter an item, don't worry, you can always change this later. Which brings us to the next set of fields on the import template, inventory group and subgroup. The first field, inventory group decides the parent inventory group. When you drag items onto a quote in auto mode, this group decides what the subtotal automatically created is called. Each subsequent group level will create a child group to the parent as you can see here. Remember to keep these fields identical for the inventory that will show up in those same categories. Our next two fields are replacement cost and purchase cost. Purchase cost is the straight cost of the item, whereas replacement is the bottom line cost to acquire the item and put it back in service. Manufacturer, manufacturer country, and part number are all useful to have filled out for reference for replacement, customs, and the like. We'll talk about quantity and model barcode shortly. Finally, for the pricing model fields, we see something that isn't present when we make a new item in Flex. In fact, pricing models are normally set in the item after it's been created. You'll fill these fields out however you like, just keep this in mind. When you submit your import sheet, you will tell Flex Support how you would like your pricing models applied. For instance, you might tell Flex pricing model one is your day rate and pricing model two is your each rate. Remember to be consistent. One thing you can do is add to this description the intended pricing model. Furthermore, Pricing model internal cost is your bottom line cost to rent that inventory. Consider here your cost to purchase, cost to own and maintain, and insurance. Internal price is the dollar amount charged to the client. Unless an inventory item is a loss leader, price should be higher than cost. So we skipped over a couple of fields. As those fields and the units tab go hand in hand, we'll explain them together. Coming back to the quantity field and inventory structure, we can see that the only example item with a value for quantity is our IEC cable. This is because the IEC cable is the only item not tracked by a serial number. 
This is a typical use case for organizations, so we keep it as non-serialized, or as some refer to it, a countable item. As when you can scan those items, you receive a prompt to enter quantity or count. We otherwise track the rest of the example inventory as serialized for the same underlying reason, to get history and a paper trail on high value, specialty, unique, and important equipment. In an environment where a deprep, prep, show workflow has been implemented, serialized gear can be tracked and located at virtually all times. Next, before we cover the units tab, I'd like to explain barcodes and barcode numbers in Flex. In Flex, all inventory and most documents are assigned a reference number. This number is usually generated by Flex but can also be user defined. But really, the important thing is this. If your equipment does not have barcodes or reference numbers, then leave these fields blank. Flex will automatically generate numbers. Alternatively, if your equipment does already have barcodes and you want that to carry over to Flex, it's important to know this distinction. On the models tab, the model barcode can represent a non-serialized item, like our IEC cable as a reference. You can scan it in Flex, but it will only bring up the item itself or a quantity entry window. Model barcodes can also represent the parent item for serialized units. This barcode isn't one that would go on a piece of equipment, but is a reference to the model which stores all of the reference data for that piece of inventory. In most cases, even if you do already have barcodes, you will most likely not have model barcodes, so this can be left blank for nearly everyone. Moving on to the Units tab, we've talked about how all of these example items are tracked by serial. They have their own individual references, as that's how we want them tracked. But where are they? We can see them in Flex, here. And if we click over to the Units tab on this file, we can see those same units. We see that this tab is very similar to the Models tab, with a few differences. The entries on this tab represent individual serialized units, physical items, like this amplifier. Name is, again, the only required field here but for a different reason, to link the serial unit to its corresponding model. As such, the names here must match identically to the corresponding model on the Models tab. The same goes for the Size field, if it's been utilized. Next are Serial and Stencil. Serial is, of course, the serial number designation printed on any given piece of equipment, but is all the same a unique identifier for an individual piece of equipment. If the item in question is still unique and needs to be individually tracked, but does not have a unique serial number, such as a unique scenic element, you can still assign it a procedural number 001, 002, and so on. Similarly, Stencil is also a unique identifier for a serialized unit, but can be used more generally. For example, our half truck pack case here is stenciled as A-01. But if we have an identical case with a different interior layout, we could stencil that case as B-01, or similarly to a serial, the case's stencil can be represented by a procedural number that represents an item. Unit barcode, as we mentioned previously, will come into play here if your equipment already has barcodes or an otherwise similar reference. If not, leave this blank and Flex will automatically generate a number. Similar to stencil, model number can help organize similar but different units under the same model. Location is important if you are starting off with multiple locations. 
This field decides which warehouse a given piece of equipment will typically return to. Make sure the location in this field matches the matching location in Flex identically. If you only have a single location, you can leave this blank. Date purchased, purchase currency, and purchase cost round out this sheet. This is bookkeeping and reference data and can be used in Flex to help calculate insurance value, but are otherwise optional. Now we'll cover the advanced template and its additional fields, which can be used to add more detail and configuration to your inventory import. It's important to note that if you have already started with the basic template and feel that you could benefit from the advanced fields, they already exist on your sheet. They just need to be unhidden. The first difference we see is this field before item name, resource type. Under most circumstances, this value will be rental for virtually everything. However, if you are carrying over inventory from another system, or if your organization also sells inventory in addition to renting it, you may use this field to further categorize your inventory. Without making additional customizations, you can categorize your inventory as rental or retail. With additional configuration, more resource types can be added if you wish. The main difference is this. Rental inventory will always be expected to return to your warehouse so it can be rented again. Retail inventory can go on the same document as rental inventory, making it easy to combine rental and retail purchases onto single quotes and invoices. Consider whether the retail inventory you enter is new or used. For brand new items, it may be useful to have a dedicated new version of the inventory in Flex in order to better make the distinction between new and used retail inventory. Shorthand and narrative description are new fields here as well. Shorthand can be used to enter abbreviated or internal names and can be utilized in Flex through deeper customization as well as with label printing if you are printing yourself. Narrative description can be used to give an extended explanation of an item or package. Like shorthand, this field only shows up in documents like custom reports. Is virtual item is a setting that can be used if the inventory you are importing or carrying over already includes intangible billable items and packages. Such items must be configured after they are imported into Flex. An additional inventory subgroup is included on the advanced template for further inventory grouping. Our next two fields are Notes and Note Mute by default. Information entered into the Notes field will carry over to any document that inventory is added to. Common uses of this field include internal prep notes, package contents, model numbers, and explanations. That distinction is made with the Note Mute option. If Note Mute for an item is Y or yes, then that information will not display on a PDF generated on a document from Flex, such as a quote. Next up, is expendable determines whether or not an item is a type that can be completely consumed and used up over the course of a job. For example, batteries or tape. The main distinction is, when an item is marked as expendable, you can still return it to inventory. Flex will not show any warnings for that inventory in the return process. As such, expendable items will generally also be designated as retail for their resource type. If all of your expendable items are retail, you can have this applied generally by request when you submit your completed import template. Our next set of fields can help give us more detail to our inventory. 
weight unit, weight, linear unit, length, width, and height are all fields that can be used to streamline logistics while using Flex. Information in these fields can be viewed as a reference or utilized in reports. It is important to note that for weight unit and linear unit, that those values, whether it's pound, ounce, inch, foot, or meter, must exist in Flex, and those entries must match exactly. Rounding out the advanced template fields on the models tab are an additional field for another pricing model if desired, and finally, section, aisle, shelf, and bin. These fields can be used to better establish exact item storage locations in warehouses and storage scenarios where values can be used to assign a location. These fields are simply text fields and can be used however you wish. Moving over to the Units tab, our new fields include a Resource Type field, which can be used in the same manner in which it is used on the Models tab, and the Purchase Order field, which, in the context of an inventory import, can be used to reference the order that the inventory item was acquired from. That covers all of the available fields on the Flex Inventory template. New customers can send the template to support at flexrentalsolutions.com to begin the import process. Be sure to avoid typos and redundancies to ensure your import process goes as quickly and smoothly as possible. Import requests without issues are typically processed within 24 hours, not including weekends or holidays. Existing customers may also make use of this service as well. If you have any questions about this process, again, please contact support at flexrentalsolutions.com for more information. Thanks, and happy flexing.